Hi everyone, in this short video I'll be introducing our Moodle platform on the course prototype. Very excited to show this off to you at this point, there's a lot of work has gone into this, so really, really happy to be able to show this to you all. This video is just going to be a very short introduction to the platform and our course. You are now enrolled on the course, and this is the dashboard page that every student will see once they log into our, our Moodle platform. I'm going to very quickly show you what's available on this dashboard, and I'm going to very quickly show you what's available on the course page as well. As this is the first page that students will get to, there's a notification functionality here at the very top of the page. This is site-wide information, so if there's any website maintenance or there's Moodle outage or, or anything like that that we expect, this is where we put it. So it's not related to a specific course, but just information for every single student. Here in the top right as well, you can see your profile and you can see there's one notification here for you when you log in. And here's where you see any messages that relate to your specific course. Down below, you've got the My Enrolled Courses. So as this is just a prototype, there's only one course currently available. But if you're a CAP2 student doing all four subjects, you'll see four of these course blocks available to you. Each course block has its own progress bar and if you hover over it it tells you how far you've progressed in this course in this situation I'm 20% of the way complete and this is generated by uh, identifying how many uh, activities within the course you've actually completed the find course option this is going to let users find courses that are available to them in this situation will be letting progression students see the courses that they have completed previously it's not going to let a cap one student see FAE courses or CAP2 courses, it's just as a way for students to go back and check courses that they, they've already been on. Then we've got the upcoming events section. This is essentially the student timetable and it's letting us try out a couple of different situations in this prototype. So here we can see there's a live chat coming up. There's also a, a knowledge check is also closing. We've got a practice session is also due as well. If you click on the view all options here, it will bring it to the upcoming events and you can see it in a bit more detail. You can also go to the month section as well and it's going to give you the calendar by the, the whole month, which is pretty nice. Back on the dashboard then, we have the bookmark section. Essentially here, what will happen is a student will be able to bookmark a particular item of content that they, they like or they find challenging or they want a refresher on. And it's going to allow them to quickly jump to that item of content without having to go into the course and the session. So it's a pretty cool feature that will really improve accessibility. Then down below, we've got the news section. In this section, this is where we can, if there's any information that we want to let students know, but it's not critical information. So maybe there might be a situation where we, we are releasing a new set of recordings on study technique. Um, and it's a, a general guide to studying across CAP and CAP2 FE. So important, but it's not critical like the, the site-wide notifications at the top. So that's the dashboard page. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that because I really want you to just get in and, and just um, test the functionality on this and just get comfortable with it. We're going to click on the course page now. On the course page, you'll find at the very top, there's a nice image uh, that relates to the course. There's also a sh short summary of the course itself. And you've got your progress bar. And here you can actually see the list of the number of activities in this course. And you can see I've done six of these 29 activities. As you scroll down, you'll get an introduction to this particular course. Every course will have this, and it's where we'll keep the high-level information about this course. So the, if you see here, it's the learning journals, it's the, the competency statements. In this situation, Brian Murphy is giving a course overview and an exam overview. So there's also a little knowledge check in there, and there's also a practice question in there. Here we can also see there's also a due date on this, and this will carry back over into your upcoming events. Then we've got the close all and open all section here. So if you've got 15 sections to make it easier, you know, instead of having to scroll down through 15 sections, you can just minimize them all. And then you can just open up the course, that, the session that you actually want. Here we've got session one, and we've got a short summary of what's covered in session one, but we've also got very clearly defined learning objectives for this session. Then we've got the activities. In this case, the activities are just the the content for session one. So we've got the learning journal, we've got the slides, we've got the recordings, we've broken them down into smaller sections here. We've got another knowledge check here. We've got some practice questions, we've got the solutions as well, and then we've got the webinar link as well. If you click on the, the webinar link, it will flag it as having progressed. So um, just in case you're wondering about that, there's no 
there's no webinar for this session. Then we've got a discussion forum and we've got a live chat as well. So this is just some functionality that we're, we're testing out to enhance the live engagement with students. So not every session is going to have a live lecture chat. There's no need if there's a webinar because that's the same functionality. Um, but if there's a session that's very theory based and there's no webinar for it, a live lecture chat and discussion forum is going to be the way that students can answer questions of the lectures relating to that content. So that's the, the basic course page introduction. Very brief, I know, but it's I really want you to just get on and just try it out yourself. Okay, everyone, really looking forward to hearing your feedback. All right, thank you very much, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.